excited about are strong, powerful females that I've been fortunate enough to, to get to play a lot. <laughs> someone gives you the opportunity and goes here you can swing this hammer for eight hours for like the next four years every day you're gonna get really good at it please please what please don't kill me i'm not killing you i'm saving the world no. but i gave you the choice didn't i i mean people keep telling me i'm so powerful in the future but i gave you this decision i must have wanted you to decide why strictly off my energy. The energy that I, I conveyed in the room was exactly what they were looking for. So it was easy for them, it was an easy choice. Um, and that changed my life and my acting career. I, they're synonymous with each other. Whenever something happens in my acting career, it affects my life. Whenever something happens in my life, it affects my acting career. My it sounds familiar. What do you think of Neville Montgomery? <sighs> Exceptionally well connected. Judges, politicians, my old boss refused to prosecute a case that would have hurt Neville's bottom line. And did Maria know how you felt? When Maria took the job as Neville's vice president, I gave her a hard time about being the devil's right-hand woman. Oh, excuse me, I have a new... Mom tells me about this one time. She came into the kitchen, and I created this whole horror scene. And you have to understand, I was maybe like six, seven years old. But I decided I was going to surprise her by taking a kitchen knife putting it here and spraying ketchup all over my shirt. Like I was in deep. I was really committed to the scene. Like just like, ah. but I mean, she knew it was fake right away, but you know, and it, it, it never stopped. Poor thing. It's just that I've been led to believe that Jane may have flatlined on the table, but when I check the records, there's no evidence of that. It's because she didn't. Who told you that? Jane did. Jane was unconscious the entire time, right? I mean, how could she possibly have known anything? So I played a drag king on The L Word, and that was my first gig, and I remember I, I booked the part, and I remember going up to the director and being like, hey, this is what I'm going to do, but hey, listen, if you see something that you want me to try or do, you just go ahead and let me know. So naive and adorable and just so green, walking around on set like, Hey, everybody! You know, like, I just, I was where I was supposed to be. Uh, what do I love about acting? I love being seen, you know? I love expressing myself. Different aspects of myself, because I play different characters, but those are all little parts of me. And someone has agreed to sit down and give me their attention for an hour, so I'm going to work my ass off to feel and emote and tell story, and that's such a privilege. And it... it it's such a good feeling to be a part of something that people are going to watch and hopefully really enjoy or really hate or have an opinion about. Yeah, to be in front of the camera is like, a, it's just an honor. I love the honor of being watched and being heard and seen as an actor and as a storyteller because I feel like actors are story conduits but not so much storytellers. We aren't the creators of the story. So the director gets to create, you know, the director um, gets to have input into the direction of the story based upon their own lives and the things that have affected them. And so that, I like them for those two reasons. I really wanted to tell a film about a woman who thought she had it all. And once this dog bit her, she realized, oh my God, this is how I've been feeling this whole time. I just never had to look at it. It's a dark comedy about a woman who ostracizes herself in her living room, in a fort, after she's been bit on the face by a dog. What I'm interested in looking at is how women especially associate their self-worth with the way they look, you know, in our society. And for my lead character, she's dealing with this and dealing with the hypocrisy of it because she's an intellect. She's a cerebral person and 
she understands on a cerebral level that her self-worth isn't based in her looks, but she can't help but feel super vulnerable and she wants to hide the world away, you know? And she does that by putting herself in a fort. Now she can control how people see her. And she was able to do that before she got bit by the dog because no one could see how vulnerable she was. But now that she wears her vulnerability on her face, she feels so exposed, so vulnerable, um, and yeah, that's what the film's about. It's about navigating that. You know, I'm constantly navigating that. And uh, I thought it would go away. I thought, you know, once I book my series regular and I have that validation from my peers and I'm on a TV show, I'll fulfill, like I'll fill that void in my heart or that like the feeling of not being good enough. It'll just poof, disappear. And what I learned was, <laughs> None of that goes away. It's just you get up in the morning and you go to this job, but you're still the same person you were before that. So your belief system in yourself never changes until you make the choice to start seeing yourself differently. And that's a slow practice, and it's, it's one that I might be doing for the rest of my life. Yeah, I'm developing a web series called Strangers in a Downward Dog. It's a play off of Hitchcock's Strangers on a Train where they exchange murders. So these two women meet in a yoga class and they exchange their problems. Um, you help me with my problem, I'll help you with yours. And they both fail miserably trying to take down the patriarchy and doing all this crazy stuff in a non-preachy, very action-orientated way. The cops get involved. It's very Thelma and Louise. Um, takes money to make stuff. And uh, yeah, so I'm working on that right now. I'm, uh, that's the same team that I did dog bite with. Oh man, teaching teaches me straight up. Like it's for selfish reasons. I love it and I, I love everything that I learn from watching the students, watching them grow, watching them hit um, challenges, trying to figure out well, where does that challenge come from? Where does it stem from? It teaches me about humanity, it teaches me about acting. It's the biggest gift in the world. It was 17 years ago. Um, my partner at the time, we went to Paris and we were traveling around and we came upon this really cool tattoo shop that was really just an art gallery. This one woman, she had paintings and sculptures and then she had this tattoo bed in the middle of her shop. And we both got tattoos there and we were really inspired by her. And we thought, how cool would it be to bring this back to Vancouver? Especially in an industry where there are not a lot of women. It'd be really cool to support female tattoo artistry. And so, yeah, my partner um, and I opened the shop. I was the business side, she was the artist. We had no idea what we were doing, which is the best way I've decided to do anything. Because if you know too much, you'll stop yourself. You know what I mean? Um, out of knowing better. And we didn't know better. So we just went head first. And it was the best thing that ever happened to me. You know, 17 years later, I've got this beautiful studio that supports me and this is like our baby you know it really feels like a child you invest in it and then hopefully it learns enough that it can take care of you someday and that's what it's doing now it's it's taking care of me and, and all these amazing artists that we, that we work with well, our business survived a breakup which was amazing um we took like a six month time out and then we came back together and we were best friends and we've been best friends ever since so that's a testament to how awesome she is my business partner's name Justina Kerbal, and she's a, a beautiful human being that I'm lucky to know. And now I'm excited about it in a, in a whole new way. We have guest artists from all over the world and teach us about tattooing. You know, we had some people here from South Korea last month, and they were so awesome and just beautiful human beings, and again, that's a gift. We get stuck sometimes when we identify with something and we go, oh, that's who I am, so that's all I'll be. But I think Human beings are um, a little bit of everything. We're shades of all sorts of gray, right? Um, way more than 50. And, uh, and so why limit yourself? Just play in every sandbox that you can. Everyone that interests you anyways. I've, I have come a long way and I've, I've learned a lot. And it's interesting at every point in my life where I thought, Oh, yeah, now I know what's going on. Um, 
um, a few years go by and I go, oh shit, I didn't know anything back then. So I'm turning 40 and I'm like, okay, I've arrived. But I'm kind of catching on to the joke. My 50 year old self is actually laughing at me right now going, you don't know shit, <laughs> you know? And, and trying to give me advice. So I'm, I guess I'm just trying to sit in the fact that I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I never will. And just to just deal with every moment. If you could play any character from any film, who would it be? <laughs> totally have this. I would play Linda Hamilton's character in Terminator 2. Two, for sure. Very specific. She was so kick-ass. She was wounded. She was broken. And then she climbed her way back in order to, like, you know, save the world and her son. And, and her fight never got put out. You know, after everything that she went through, she still, the, the fight in her was like so palpable. And I loved that about that character.